A very good morning to you and thank you for joining us this morning. Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you and also with you. Welcome to our Sunday service on this very special Palm Sunday. And this is the day where we celebrate Jesus's triumphant entry into Jerusalem on a donkey. And the crowd had cut down palm branches and laid them on the road for Jesus to walk over, shouting Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord Jesus, you have promised that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you will be also. And here we are. And we trust you will be here with us as well this morning. And I'm delighted that you can be here. And if you know of any of the responses that we say, please say them. Otherwise, just join in whatever you can. Dear friends, during Lent, we've been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we come together, albeit digitally, to begin this solemn week, Holy Week, in union with the church throughout the world. Jesus enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. Now, normally at this point, I would bless some palm crosses that had been made and hand them out. But I don't know whether you've managed to get a small branch or something similar. I went out into the garden and I got this, so just a, a leaf off something. I'd, I'm not a horticulturist. I have no idea what it is and just fashioned it into this. And I know on our website, on our page book, a Facebook page, uh, we did show you some ideas as to how to make a palm cross. So if you've got them there now, just bring them near to the screen. Almighty God, we pray, bless these palms and make them holy. Today we joyfully acclaim Jesus, our Messiah and King. May we reach one day the happiness of the new and everlasting Jerusalem by faithfully following him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And you can put that somewhere and keep it during the week to look at, to be reminded that this is Holy Week. Our first reading is from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them straight away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them and bought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that shouted, followed, shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let me start by asking you a question. Where will you put your palm cross or your representation of it as you've made it during the rest of this Holy Week and indeed in the year? 
It's Palm Sunday today, the day Jesus, as we've just heard, made this great entrance into Jerusalem. And he didn't arrive in the way that the crowd were expecting. They wanted a Messiah to be in, seated on a majestic charger, probably, as a conquering king might. Not riding on a donkey. I mean, a donkey of all things. The animal that was most associated with riding along a beach and people make fun of. G.K. Chesterton wrote a wonderful poem. With monstrous head and sickening cry, and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody on all four-footed things. When fishes flew and forests walked and figs grew upon thorn, some moment when the moon was blood, then surely I was born. With monstrous head and sickening cry, and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody of all four-footed things. The tattered outlaw of the earth, of ancient crooked will, starve, scourge, deride me. I am dumb. I keep my secret still. Fools, for I also had my hour, one far fierce hour and sweet. There was a shout about my head and palms before my feet. Yes, the donkey had his hour, and he was chosen to fulfil a prophecy. And how was Jesus welcomed? How did the people of Jerusalem meet him? Hosanna, they shouted. And yet, within a very short time, they changed. The same crowd would in a few days be calling for his death. Crucify him! That warm welcome would turn to cold hatred. And the way that Jesus entered Jerusalem, he didn't slink in with his followers over the hills and through a gate at the dead of night. He came in boldly so that nobody would miss him. A deliberate act, if you will. Jesus knew what he was doing. He was being obedient. Where will you put your palm cross? What does Jesus, where does Jesus fit into our lives from Monday to Saturday? Is he, as St Paul said in our epistle today, raised on high? Or do we leave him in a corner? Do we stand up for Jesus? The way that we share Jesus will be reflected in how we treat the poor and marginalised in society. Remember that child in him, dearly, dearly as he loved, and we must love him too and trust in his redeeming love and try his works to do. We're entering Holy Week, where we will follow Jesus. We've been swept into the city today and we'll be carried along on his, to his, his inevitable death and glorious resurrection. And as we follow, we can be changed. And we can share as part of our Christian journey. Or are we going to go away today unchanged and unmoved by all that we've seen and heard? Will we allow the story to transform us, to heal us, to empower us for our mission in the world? Because that sharing could be a real challenge, as we've heard today. For Jesus, the applause from the crowd soon turned to boos and jeers and calling for his death. Now, I'm sure none of us are in danger of that, but standing up for Jesus these days isn't always welcome. So let me ask you that quick question again. Where will you put your palm cross? Will you leave it for people to see when they visit your house so they may say, what's that? And you can explain to them the symbol of the palm cross. We come now to our time of prayer and there are some special uh, prayers for Palm Sunday. God our Father, as Christ was welcomed into the holy city, may we welcome him into our lives and homes May the King of glory have rule in our hearts, that your kingdom come in us as it does in heaven. The response to Lord in your mercy is, hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy. Holy God, teach us humility that we may not lord it over anyone, that we may be gentle in all our dealings. We pray that your church may work for the coming of your kingdom in obedience to your will and in the manner of Christ. We remember especially today all Christians who live and work in situations of great deprivation or in places where their faith makes them targets for persecution and violence. Lord, in your mercy. As we remember how in the first Holy Week our Saviour was rejected by those in authority and betrayed by one he trusted, so we pray for the people and nations of today whose leaders have betrayed their trust. We pray for those in our world who feel rejected and marginalised by those around them, for victims of discrimination, and especially we pray for the poor, for refugees and asylum seekers. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all who've protected us in a journey through life, for loved ones who've seen to our growth and our well-being. 
Bless those who've lost their homes, their possessions, their sense of security. Surround with your love and protection all who feel anxious, especially at this time, or in danger. Send them strong and trustworthy friends. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as we recall this week the suffering of your Son, Jesus Christ, so we bring to you all who are suffering in our world today, those in need or distress for whatever reason. We pray for the sick in body and mind, and especially we pray for Glenna, for Marguerite and Anita, for Joan and Alan. We pray for those who are close to death, and those who wait with them, especially in this time of COVID-19, and all who are caring for us. And we pray for those who grieve, and those who especially ask for our prayers. And in the silence now, let's mention those we know, or who've asked for our prayers. I pray especially for Andy. Lord, in your mercy. King of kings and Lord of lords, we remember before you today all who've entered into the joy of your kingdom, all who found new life in you. And here in the silence of our own hearts, let's remember those whom we love but see no longer. May your light perpetual shine upon them and may they rest eternally in your peace. And let's say now a prayer for us all. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbours' safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. Now, normally at this point, I would share the peace with everybody in the congregation. And what we would do, would give a hug or shake hands at the very least, or maybe a wave. Now, obviously, we can't do that today unless you're fortunate enough to be with somebody there in the same room. But let's do it anyway. So let's say together, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. You might like to type it up as a comment. Peace be with you. And now we're coming to our time of communion. And I asked if you'd like to join us to maybe get a, a small piece of bread or similar and a cup of wine. I'm using a lovely set I got in Israel for my communion set this morning. If you don't know the responses, just keep silent or make them up your, yourself. But if you know them, please uh, do join in with us. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God loves us, even though we're sinners. So let's say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just. Our duty always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. 
The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocates in heaven and plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing at his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we may not be together physically, but we are one body and we are one family, so let's join together in the words of the family prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let's take the bread now. The body of Christ broken for you. Now the wine. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Just before the final prayers, thank you so much for joining with me this morning and for um, sending some messages that have been coming through that I've seen on the screen, which I will do my best to uh, reply to later. Thank you so much, and uh, I hope you're going to join us again, maybe next Sunday. Who knows what we'll be doing next Sunday. I think we're going to do a united service here from the West Sheppey Benefice, so watch out for that. We will put, be putting up posts throughout the week so that you'll know what's going on. In the meantime, be good neighbours, be good Samaritans, look after each other, stay well, do all the things they're telling us to do, even if you hate being on your own, even if you hate self-isolation as I do, I'm doing it because I know it's for the best. So I pray that God will be with you this week and that you will every now and again look at your palm cross and think about it and remember what Jesus did for you and for me. The Lord be with you. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, 
a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love wherever they are, this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning and God bless you all.